You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And welcome to the first episode of Heart Like the Lion, a show where we seek to get to the heart of the matter when it comes to life and faith. How can we be men and women after Yah's own heart, as David was called, guarding and learning his word? How can we share truth with wisdom like King Solomon, remembering to walk with the fear of Yah? And how do we step out in faith like the prophet Elijah, allowing the Spirit of God to work through and in us? I'm excited today to begin the show with an extremely pertinent topic, staying focused in the world with so many distractions. When Yahushua walked this earth, he could have spoken on many truthful topics, which would have been profound and interesting, yet he seemed to focus primarily on repentance and the gospel of the kingdom. In the Gospel of John, John wrote in chapter 21, verse 25, This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, that which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. And we could have been given lots of truths that could have been passed down to us, but only the ones necessary for the work of God to be accomplished were shared. But as the book of Daniel prophesied, as we near the time of the end, knowledge and information would grow at an exponential rate. Saying in Daniel 12:4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. What? is the most pressing things that we as believers should focus on with so many distractions being put in front of us. What would our Messiah want us to focus on when all the world's information is at our fingertips? We better figure this out before we get lost in a never-ending rabbit hole. So tonight I am so pleased to be joined by P.D. Vander Westhusen of Rise on Fire Ministries and it's such a blessing to have him back on the show. We've had him on Now You See TV a few times for interviews that have just been a blessing and uh, and I'm pleased to have you back on P.D. What's up? Thank you for joining me. Thanks Jake. It's so lovely to be here and I'm really excited about this topic. You know, I actually, you know, me and Jake, we spoke a bit about this beforehand and you know, we, we wanted to do this show because we felt it's so important to talk about this, you know, and as Jake said, you know, there's this increase of knowledge that was prophesied in Daniel. And today we are in that time, you know, he actually says at the end, at the end of the age will be this increase of knowledge. And if we look at the world around us today, only in the, in the past 20 years, there's been a larger increase. We've got more knowledge than we've ever had in history before accessible by to the masses. But so with that, it's great because now we have this knowledge and we have then, that means there's, there's access to truth, right? Or many truths. But at the same time, now we're, we're sitting with a lot of noise. We, we see a lot of more stuff, a lot of things to choose from. And we've got limited time, a lot of knowledge. What, so the problem is, where will we deposit our time? Where will we put that? Because it is incre- it's even more, more important and pertinent today because we sit with more knowledge than 2,000 years ago. So like Jake said, Yeshua, he had, you know, he had also a lot of things to choose from, right? There was many things he could have spoken about, but he chose to speak about certain things and other things he was absolutely quiet about. Not that it wasn't even necessarily unimportant. It, it, there were many other, other important things. But the question rather is, what is most important? Because, you know, what is, uh, what, is, what is important is the greatest enemy of what is most important. So what is most important? That's what we want to talk about in this uh, show. And yeah, we hope this will bless you guys. Now, I would like to start off with uh, the positive side of this that I've been looking at, which would be that over the past several thousand years, the vast majority of humanity has been 
illiterate, without the ability to read, without the ability to even look into the scriptures that have been passed down uh, that detail the Messiah, that detail the words of the prophets and the Torah. And it's an exciting thing that we now live in a generation where literacy has grown exponentially and where there's no longer an excuse for somebody to say, well, I, I didn't know, I was ignorant. And the time of God winking at our ignorance is coming to a close, I feel like, because now we can just go and we can look for ourselves. When in the past, we would have to depend on a rabbi to be reading from the scrolls or from a priest to be teaching us in Latin what the scriptures say. And in fact, for many years, we weren't even allowed to share uh, the scriptures or to share the Bible in, in our very own language. For those who are English speaking, it was illegal to do that for a, a, a period of time. And so whenever we look at today and, and the amazing blessing that God is delivering to our generation, it is extremely exciting. We have literally the the scriptures opened up in front of us with the ability to go into apps like the Blue Letter Bible and, and eSword and to go into concordances when we don't even speak Koine Greek or Hebrew or any of these other languages and we can get into the deeper meanings of the scriptures. But at the same time, uh, with this increase of knowledge, we have the age of the internet has come around and we have all these other truths that are starting to pop up their head and uh, to call us towards them, to want us to go on these rabbit trails to chase them and, and to find out, well, you know, how have, how have we been lied to as a society for the past few thousand years or or what is this great deception that is coming up and trying to get into all this information that can really tickle our ears but what hit me as a profound thought of a, a little while ago and I posted it as a, a status on Facebook was that what if the great deception was possibly not a big lie but what if the great deception was insert your own personal truth here that distracts you and leads you away from the calling that God would have you pursue after instead. Because whenever you look at what is something that is antichrist, it's often something that is in place of Christ. And as we enter into this age where information is literally at our fingertips, good information, bad information, uh, we have to be very careful because there are so many things that we can spend our time researching and, and diving into, but if we lose sight of our Messiah, if we lose sight of the calling that he has placed on every single believer to walk out our faith in the way that he demonstrated to the apostles, then we might be missing the mark and we might just be getting distracted at a time where time is short. And that's a very scary thought. And uh, that's when you chimed in under that post there, PD, and, and made some comments of your own. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really like you said, and it's, it's like a gravy train of knowledge, really, if you think about it. Like there's always some going to be something, you know, you whether it, there's always a new conspiracy theory, there's always a new or, you know, whatever else, even things that are not conspiracy theories. Um, so, yeah, it's like you say, what, so what will we choose? What will we put our... Uh, att attention to and you know with this it's also interesting because the scripture also talks about how knowledge puffs up right and how but how love builds up and and it's it's really something that i've also seen is um, oftentimes when people are like you said you know we've got our callings we've got something that god has placed on our life that he wants us to accomplish especially in this age but the enemy is going to come and bring distractions and yes, it is. I believe that that is kind of a part of an antichrist plan, right? And when he brings those distractions, it's going to lead us away from the calling that God has placed on our life or distract us from that. And oftentimes now we're, we're, we're like I said, this gravy train of knowledge, always knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. And oftentimes that leads to us sitting at home and um, consuming this knowledge all day long, the next thing after the other, but never actually applying um, scripture in our life the way we're supposed to or the things that uh, Yeshua, like what Jesus was most concerned about, you know. So, um, like I said, now suddenly pride can start creeping in um, because I want to just read here, you know, 1 Corinthians 8, he, is, he talks about how, how knowledge puffs up. He says, 
Now, concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And if anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. So if you think you know something, you actually know nothing <laughs> in a way is what he's trying to say. Because if you think you know something, that is pride speaking. The humble and hard will be humble and say, and say, I don't know anything. And in fact, the more you actually learn about your Messiah and his ways, you'll, you'll learn how much you still have to know and learn, you know. Um, so it's interesting because in the context of this, Paul, like I said, he starts with now food, now concerning food offered to idols. Because back in his day, that was a huge deal. Today, not as much anymore. But there, you know, what you, when you go into the marketplace, there's all these food and a lot of it is offered to idols. And he had the knowledge, though, which was something that most people didn't have. That, hey, there's only one God. There's no other God. There's no such thing as an idol really, right, for him. So he could have technically went and he could have eaten whatever he wants to because he knows there's no other God. But... Because he knew there were many others around him who does not possess this knowledge. He did not go and just indulge himself because he, would, he was in, afraid that someone would see him doing this and then, then therefore making them stumble by that. So now what he's, tra- he's saying is, hey, I've got this knowledge. I've got this something that no one else really has around me. You know, and it's even good. It's true, right? But I'm not going to, I'm not going to make this knowledge uh, I'm not going to really make this knowledge known or whatever in this time because by that I can make someone stumble. Rather, I'm going to love them where they are. And when their correct time may become, there is a time and a place for everything. And if God really desires me to, yeah, sure, then I'll come and I'll reveal this like he did, of course, later. But so in the same way, yes, there's all this knowledge floating around. We should be we should make a decision what will we consume what will we spend our time on and then what will we reveal or and how will we reveal that what is our are we going to uphold love above knowledge or are we going to lift up knowledge and let our pride come in the way and like, oh look i've got all this knowledge oh you you know and and then make someone stumble by that so that's also important to keep in mind i think in this discussion Absolutely. And, and, you know, another aspect of this is understanding how to share truth in a way that is loving, because that's something that is always controversial when it comes to people that are waking up to the Torah, the Sabbath, the dietary things, walking as the Messiah walked, not just in those things, but in all of the things that he would have demonstrated for us. And whenever we feel we're right in something, uh, sometimes we can fall prey to the spirit of rightism, which is taking your sword of the, you know, the word is a sword and you take it and you chop somebody's ear off, thus deafening them to hearing anything else you would have to share with them. But we see that our example in scripture that Yeshua did was he restored the things that were lost to people and he called people to repentance. And And so I, I think I'd really like to focus tonight in this discussion on what would the Messiah have us focus on. And and those of you who watch NIC TV, you know we cover a wide variety of topics, conspiracy topics. We cover all these different things. And, and there is a, a need for that in challenging the Zacharias Sitchins and the different theories that are put out there to basically push the al- ancient aliens and, and all the different aspects of lies that are being put out, but we never want to lose sight on the most important things that the Messiah would have us talking about and have us walking out. And so uh, I, I would really like to discuss that with you, PD, and, and get into what would the Messiah have believers focusing t- on today uh, during this time where any information is available at our fingertips. But at the same time, uh, What is okay to start to look into and and is it all right to go down some rabbit trails because not all of them are bad and would it be more valuable to study things regarding the scriptures or to watch a football game? So, you know, those are some questions that I've had in my mind and and the last thing is I I never want to be ignorant of of maybe sin in my own life or or things that are drawing me away from a closer relationship with Yah. And so uh, we need to all be prepared to be tenderhearted and to be able to 
check ourselves whenever we're focusing too much energy on our favorite pastime or our favorite topic, whenever we're neglecting other things of the faith. Right, exactly. So, you know, um, what you mentioned now is really important, you know, in terms of, you know, there are many things and there are many things that can be profitable. And I think, I think the easiest way we can really start discerning is um, where are we with our relationship with Yeshua and how much do we look like him? You know, and how much are we um, able to walk out, not just know about either, but walk out the things that he placed as most important? So, you know, there are many things, but if you're not doing that, if you, if the things that are most important to him, the things that he earnestly begged us to walk out before he, right before he left, if those things aren't um, manifest in our life, then we need to be like, okay, whoa, let's hold on. Let's see first. Let, let me get this right first. Because you don't you know I mean, like I say, there are many things that are important, right? But you don't want to come there one day in front of him and he's like, well, these things were really important. Well done. Um, but why, why didn't you do what I actually told you to do? The things that were most important, right? And, and then also with that is what was the heart when you went about doing that like you mentioned this jake this is also incredibly important like you know you your heart behind and the way you communicate a truth is just as important as the truth itself if you you can have all the truth in the world you know and that's like like we read in the scriptures but if you have not love it means nothing you're like a clanging symbol and so in other words your heart and the love that you need to carry with that truth is is just as important as the very truth itself and so, you know, how are we communicating our, our knowledge, you know? And so then, you know, like we mentioned, uh, what, is, what is the, I think, uh, you know, what is true? What is, what is the most important things that Yeshua asked us to do? And, you know, just in my mind, um, when I love to just look at what he told us last, right before he ascended, okay? And that is what many know as this great commission or you know, that's kind of the, okay, I'm going, um, this is what I'm leaving you with. And next time I see you, <laughs> this is what we're going to be talking about probably, you know, amongst many other things. But this is going to be uh, on the top of that list most probably. Because, you know, we always talk about what you say in the beginning and the end of something is usually the two most important things because that's what people remember. That's, and Yeshua knew this. So the last thing he said before he went, it's pretty important. And, uh, you know, so it's the gospel, like, like Jake mentioned, is, you know, you have sin, you have, you have fallen short of the glory of God, you need to repent, you need to get baptized, you need to become a new creation in Him. And, you know, it's, that's, the, that's the truth, you know, what is sin, of course, as well. And then also, I, I believe the second part of that is now, how do we actually spread that truth? Okay, it's not just about keeping it to ourselves, but now secondly, how do we actually take that out to the world as well? So yeah, what do you think about that, Jake? Yeah, what it makes me think of is I picture a, a guy standing in front of the Grand Canyon, right? This beautiful vista that just goes on, just something that makes your eyes want to tear up and you see the beauty of God's creation. But somebody stands in front of this guy and holds up a picture of a waterfall and says, hey, this is a true place and this is really beautiful and you should be looking at this. And they're blocking their view of this massive, beautiful vista that is just beyond their sight. And, uh, and that's kind of what it makes me think of is that, yes, we can be sharing truth and we can be pointing, hey, God did this. But what if we're blocking somebody's view from this amazing plan, amazing beauty that he has just on the other side of our distraction? And, and I want to get past those distractions and I want to focus and have my eye on what he would want us paying attention to. And, and of course, uh, like you said, the first and the last thing are the most important things. And, and the gospel of the kingdom is so exciting. And one of the most important things for me uh, as I've started to walk out my faith was learning about my identity as a believer, learning about the, the walk of the Messiah and, and how to w follow in his footsteps. And another aspect would be learning how to step out in faith 
in ways that uh, otherwise I wouldn't if I was sitting in a room and on a computer all day long. And, and I, I want to pay attention to those things. Uh, and I, of course, I'm preaching to myself here because for me, I, I totally agree that the, the Great Commission, going out and sharing the gospel and, and sharing that truth that changed my life forever and uh and has changed my life to the day i die um is is something that i want to be um focusing on in a, in a major way and because how can i get somebody excited in all these other minor topics that they can take or leave or that doesn't have any principal effect on their life whenever i'm not first sharing with them the very thing that drastically changed my life and and that's really what uh, that makes me think of uh, regarding the great commission pd mm. yeah that's awesome bro. and you know like you know same here you know it, it's i think all i think we're all going to be preaching to ourselves in this one and you know because we can always be spending more time on this or be looking at how we can look and we should be this should be a lifelong thing um it's not something we pick up and okay cool i got that one now now let's move on to that conspiracy theory you know it's it's uh it's gonna be something you know you have to develop yourself in this and then come keep developing yourself in this you know throughout your life and then yeah sure you know you can there's nothing wrong with um you know touching on other things that are important as well of course right but are you continuously are we continuously you know going to be um, focusing on this very thing that Yeshua was focused on because and let's face the facts you know this is what he spoke about like 90% of the time you know and so are we speaking about that that much is that what or or are we speaking 90% about something else and 5% about something else and 5% about or 3% about something else and 2% about this oh by the way uh, there's this gospel too you know <laughs> so you know, that's what we, we need to really look at our life, do an introspection, you know, in our life. And and how much time, what percentage of my time and what my effort and is going into learning the gospel and spreading the gospel and figuring out how to spread it better? You know, how much time and, and you know, the most beautiful thing about this that I love is, and Jake, you know, I will have to talk about this, is, you know, how we can actually be, you know, this thing is a lifestyle. You know, the gospel is supposed to be a lifestyle. It's when you go in the, about your boring, mundane, daily things, you can carry this truth with you. You know, while, <laughs> you know, when you go to a, a supermarket, it might be weird to point the finger at someone and be like, you know, do you know about this conspiracy theory? Or do you know about that one? Or do you know about this? Or weird thing that most people would just freak out about if you just went that. But you know, it's it's easier, or I don't know about the word is easier. Probably, maybe, maybe not. But you know, it, this thing of the of the gospel, we can go and we can take to to people everywhere, everywhere we go, um, on a constant basis. And that's the beauty of it. It's a, it's a, it's the, this change of life that it brought us, like you mentioned, a change your life. We need to kind of put that on every day, and not not grow passive about that thing and you know i was thinking the other day how easy it is um, even for me to like just um take it off and take put it all back on when i want to you know when i'm in a really weird situation around sort of people that may not like it as much and i it's easy to take it off and pretend like it's not there you know like this the fact that i'm supposed to be sharing the gospel everywhere i go and then put it back on when i feel more comfortable you know you know, that's, for example, something that's really, that's not good, you know, and we need to make sure that we don't do that. We need to be putting that on all the time. So in the midst of everything else we talk about, you know, whatever that other thing is, we can now involve the gospel in. We can bring that in as the foundational fact, foundational thing. And anything else, if we really talk about anything else, it just should only be um, built on that. And it should never be the substance. The substance, what we're talking about, should be our calling. And everyone's callings is really connected to this thing of spread the gospel. And what is the gospel? Am I living the gospel? Is my life right before God? Is my heart clean? And am I living a life that is loving and that is at the same time walking in holiness? 
you know, this discussion makes me think of the message that was given in the book of Revelation uh, to the church of Ephesus. In Revelation 2, uh, verse 3, it says, Without growing weary, you have persevered and endured many things for the sake of my name. But I have this against you. You have abandoned your first love. Therefore, keep in mind how far you have fallen. Repent and perform the deeds you did at first. But if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from this place. And this is a pretty serious thing that he's leveling out against this church at Ephesus, that they had forgotten their first love. They had forgotten that thing that had made them excited about all these other minor topics in the first place. The, the excitement of proving that the Messiah and the God we follow after is the most high God and that he does perform the words that he set out in his scriptures. And, um, and whenever I look at, uh, the modern church or even truther communities, fringe cr Christian communities that are starting to try to break open the book again, I see two different sides of the equation. I see people that are sitting in, in churches that are hearing the same sermons and the same topics talked about over and over and they're getting bored. And that's a scary thing in the first place, because if you're going to a congregation and you're saying, when am I getting out of here? You've lost <laughs> that passion, that, that desire that should have brought you there in the first place. And what I often see is that people then find entertainment in other areas, which opens the door to a whole host of issues. Whenever you're not finding that excitement and that passion and that entertainment well it shouldn't be entertainment but interest in uh the the scriptures or in going to fellowship then often people go and they find that entertainment and and things that are not made to promote the scriptures but are in contrast or are something that might be detrimental to your spiritual well-being and they find entertainment there and it becomes a, a lackluster thing to focus on the scriptures anymore because it's not as exciting. It's not as entertaining. It's not as, you know, cool. But I see also on the other side that whenever you have people that start to get into truth, they find all these, these topics that allow them to think themselves smarter than others or to have some nugget of, of information that nobody else has. And they herald that as the most important thing ever as, Hey, I got this golden nugget and you guys need to know about it. But then they stop sharing the gospel. They stop sharing the most important thing, which is that the kingdom of heaven is now and that Yeshua has made a way for us to reconcile with our father in heaven and we need to repent we need to get baptized and we need to start walking out in faith and um and i think that's something that you definitely uh enjoy talking about uh especially with your book that you've written uh reigniting spirit and truth pd which i, I think is a very important uh thing to be talking about today and uh and maybe you could share a little bit about how do we uh sh walk in this truth along with this spirit that God is giving us to dwell in us and work in us. And, 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 and how do we start to walk out this faith uh, without forgetting the very thing that changed us in the first place? All right. Awesome. Yeah, Jay. Uh, thanks, brother. You know, the, the, the amazing thing that I love about like what Yeshua, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we're going to read that now, but what Yeshua mentioned that the, the last, like kind of that last, big um, thing that he told his disciples right before he left you know he's kind of like hey you guys doubt you're doubting but it's okay you know it's kind of interesting I want to read this quick he says Matthew 28 verse 17 and when they saw him they worshipped him but some doubted okay and Yeshua came and said to them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, the, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, there's two things I want to point out that's kind of that I really love about this. And uh, the first thing is he mentioned the scriptures mentioned that 
you know, they saw him and they worshipped him, but some doubted. Because remember, he just got raised from the dead. And even in that moment of him being there, some still doubted. And I want to submit to you, it's, if, if it's interesting, when you go to all of these, uh, every, just about every time when he gives his disciples the Great Commission in the scriptures, there's always that verse that says they had unbelief, they doubted. It's, it, it is, it's always there. And, it's, and I think it's mentioned because it, it's kind of where a lot of us, I mean, we all start or have unbelief or doubt in some area, right? And so before he's like, okay, yeah, you've got unbelief, you've got doubt, you've got whatever, whether it's in what God wants to do through you or whether it is, you know, whatever it is, you know. Um, But, okay, get this. Then he goes on. He says, okay, now go, therefore, you've got doubt, but go and make disciples, baptize them, do all these great, like, wow, big things. Yeah, you've got doubt, but go and do it. It's like, it's almost like he just overlooks that fact completely that these people, some of these people have doubt in him, but he still goes and he just proclaims this. You know, I want to submit to you, the, one of the big reasons for that is that Yeshua knew that if you just go and do, regardless of what you feel, you'll be okay. If you just go and you do what I say, regardless of what you feel, whether you feel you believe or not, like... I don't really care. Just go and do what I say because in the act of doing, you will start believing what you do. You will start walking it out. You will start getting the love. You may, you may not have love now, but once you're there praying, for, you force yourself into this place. You absolutely force yourself to pray for this guy right now, regardless of how much you feel like you love him right now. I bet you like five seconds in, you're going to love him. Because the love of God is going to be poured into you to give to this man. That's how God works. You know, you, I mean, I was there. I was in a place where I didn't feel like loving anyone. I just was like doing my own thing. And I mean, but then I I was just like, well, let me just do this. And I went and I, you know, a little step maybe, you know, maybe just seeing someone alongside the road, pushing a cart, you know, or whatever, stopping and being like, hey, what's wrong? Is there anything I can pray for you for? You know, or, you know, blessing a waiter with a tip that is way bigger than she would ever expect and then telling her why, because God loves her. Okay. Little things like that would be, it actually changed me more than I would almost say than that person I was, and it changed them, but it changed me more because now in that moment, God comes and he pours that love into me, pours the belief into me that God, wow. The love that God has for this person is so crazy. And, you know, I think if we just realized the love that God has for someone, then all the belief that of how, we can now suddenly believe how much God is willing to do for someone. So now that healing or miracle or whatever cherry on the cake, if you will, that, those things now become more real and easier to believe. Because we understand the love of God so much more. So, you know, that is like for me, that's where I kind of just started. And that's what did it for me. It's just understanding God's love for me and for others. Very well put. And, uh, you know, I think this, this topic reminds me of another thing that we have to be very aware of. It's that anything, anything in God's creation can become an idol. We can turn anything into an idol. And I wanted to read this verse from uh, Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4, and it says, Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him, that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Now, I think this is something important to touch on because uh, this is really the heart of the matter. And, and on this show, uh, Heart Like the Lion, uh, I really want to get to the core essential purpose of why we're talking about this today is 
we are creating idols and we don't know that they're idols but whenever we put anything above yah whenever we make something our heart's desire and it's not something that's from him we're in a dangerous area and and i i want to question and, and challenge that mentality that people have that idols are just these these carvings or these blocks or 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 just the this false god and yes those are true but an idol can be uh, a sport it can be a certain topic it can be anything that draws you away from your relationship and your walk with god i mean we have uh back in the day you had baals right people were worshiping baal well nowadays we have football and baseball <laughs> and um and i'm just i'm just joking around here but it's true and we know it's true because whenever you see people all that their mind is focused on and in, intent on on going after and the only thing that makes their eyes light up are their favorite pastimes or or their favorite topic of discussion and my hope and my desire is that all of us as a community of believers as people wanting to seek after and pursue after the heart of our Messiah to to learn what it means to walk as he walked and to learn the things that he would have cared about if he were here right now walking and telling us hey I, I would like to go and do that or I would like to learn about that or focus on that and to be able to be sensitive to his voice so that we can then apply these concepts and break away from the things that we might consider minor but in the eyes of our Creator are idols and that is a, a horrible thing to uh to think about that you might have idols even right now and that's a challenge that is even applicable to myself that you know i, I need to focus on the things that keep me from pouring myself into the word or or distract me in, in a way that keeps me from sharing the gospel at every chance i get or, or makes me think that it's more important to share this truth, this conspiracy, this uh, current event, this latest doom and gloom mainstream media newscast, and makes that take precedence over sharing the most important truths of them all. And, uh, and that would be the Great Commission. That would be the gospel of the kingdom. And, uh, and I think that's an interesting thing that maybe we should address is can people make idols out of anything, PD? What would you think? Yeah, and you know what's kind of, it makes me think of the story of Egypt and the Exodus, right? Because when we look at the, the idols right back then, this is like a long time ago, right? And they've got, they were big on idols. Pharaoh was big on idols. In fact, you know, all the plagues that God brought on Egypt were targeting their idols, you know. But it's interesting, but the last plague was the firstborn, right? And, you know, the death of the firstborn. And, you know, one of the biggest idols of Egypt were actually when Pharaoh was, he thought himself of as a god or his firstborn as a god, you know, because they thought they were like gods too. Not just that they were all these other gods around them, but they themselves were gods. And that's a big thing today, I feel. I th actually think one of the biggest gods today, false gods, of course, is ourselves. Right, that we we and it and it can be as simple, you know, we can it can be as simple as having the wrong heart behind even the things of God. Even being like, Oh, I love the things of God, I spend so much time in his word, I do but the reason is so that I can be exalted. The reason is so that people can be like, Oh wow, or you know, I possess this knowledge or you know, whatever you know, so we have to be careful, you know, we can even use the things of God to make ourselves an our own idol if you will it, it's really a really deceptive place and that's what the enemy loves to do he wants to puff us up he wants to you know you are so great you are so you know that's what happened to the disciples you know at some point they were like well yo yo you sure which which one of us is the best which one of us is the greatest you know that is idol worship right there they were you know they were starting to like be like wow we're doing all these miracles you know, we're, we've got all this knowledge. We know the guy. You know, we know the Messiah. We're pretty special. And, you know, so it's, we need to be so careful not to be like 
um, fall into that trap either. So yeah, anything can be an idol, whether it is a um, uh, some kind of a truth, some kind of a untruth, a conspiracy theory, anything that is not our God. And so we worship Him, and He's the only one we worship. He's the only one who gets who gets the glory. He's the one who gets exalted. And any moment we need to be careful. Why am I doing what I do? Why am I studying the Bible? Why am I um, maybe going out to pray for people like we just talked about? You know, why am I doing whatever I spend my time on? Is it giving glory to his kingdom or is it giving glory to something or someone else or myself? You know, it's really simple, I think, to understand what is an idol in our life if we simply ask who's getting the glory, you know. Um, and even <clears throat> I'm going to, this is going to be a hard one, but when we're watching TV, when we're doing mundane things, you know, who's getting the glory when we're washing dishes, who's getting the glory. When I wash dishes, I love to like think on the things of God, right? Like that's a time where I'm like, I can just relax and think on him, right? What are you doing when you're idle? Right? What are you doing when you're, you know, and, and of course, right? I'm not, we, we can't say that, yes, 24-7, we need to be just thinking about God. And if we just don't think about God with every single second of our day, we're doing idol worship. That's not what I mean, of course, right? Um, but when we, but are we focused on giving Him glory through our, our day in the great and the things that we say, okay, this is going to be time I'm giving to God. And in the things that we're not necessarily, that we have other things to do, that like we have children to raise, we have whatever. But are we, are we always mindful of Him? Is He... So, you know, I see, I think this intimacy we need to have with God is not just a hour a day or whatever that you set aside for him. It is supposed to be an ongoing thing throughout your day where you take him on and put him on wherever you go. And so when we do that, idols and, and things like that in our life becomes harder to have around because, you know, I remember when I started becoming more serious about God, you know, I, I, one of the first thing that went is some of my music because I loved I really was into my music and I was just like, okay, well, you know what I'm going to do? All my music, every single track in my library needs to be worshipped to God. <laughs> I'm done with anything that's not like that. For example, you know, so what area in your life is, are you lifting your pleasures above God? Because that may just be an idol. Yeah, I, I've heard the saying before uh, an idle mind is the devil's playground and uh well uh, yeah of course if you have idols up in your mind then of course he's hanging around there no. um but the idea of taking every thought and capturing it and and checking it with the word of god is something that the apostle paul even teaches us in the scriptures that we need to be putting everything that comes into our mind through a filter and to double check our heart whenever we're absorbing something or we're spitting something out because if life and death is through the tongue we got to be very careful about the things that we're declaring and we're pronouncing as truth and uh, and i think that's something we can all check ourselves with and you know whenever it comes to uh this topic of of challenging the idols in our life it, it's so important to remember that if we are focusing on God in all the things we do and we're giving him honor and glory, just like you said, in the day-to-day -day mundane actions, then there's not going to be that opportunity to daydream and allow the enemy to put thoughts in your mind or allow a bunny rabbit trail to drag you away from the things God would have rather you focus on. And I think that's a, a very good point that you made there, PD. And, um, and it's something that of course, I think we can all work on because we all have our little areas of, of distraction and, and our areas of weakness. And that's why it's so important to have other people to encourage and, and to help push you in the right direction whenever you feel like, hey, you know, I'm, this week I, I just I didn't have that passion or I, I wasn't as interested in the message. And to share that with people and, and to get to, you know, what is it that's distracting you what what is it that's changing your mind to want to focus on other things and and then identify it and take it away because it's a scary thing to have areas that 
are no-no zones in our mind. Uh, for me, whenever you think of, for whenever I think of um, areas that people create as idols, it's it's often the, the the area that they don't even want to discuss. It's like, oh, that's no big deal. You know, don't even don't even even want to talk about it. That's just my thing. And whenever you really question that, it it can be an idol, um, especially if you don't let it be um, put through the ringer uh, and you don't check it with your walk and your relationship because, you know, all of these uh, different idols that we have put in front of us today are are pretty numerous and the more information grows and, and I know we kind of swayed from information and, and topics that are distractions to idols, um, but it comes down to it is if we're in the last days PD and we have a short amount of time to do the mighty works that God would have us do. You, know, you have the scriptures that say the harvest is plentiful, plentiful, but the workers are few. We want to be the people that are stepping up to the task at hand when time is trickling away. And we don't want to be somebody that locks themselves in a hole and focuses on something that we could be going out there and actually changing the world instead. And, and so in the days that we're living in PD, and I know we've talked about the great commission as being something that we definitely need to learn. We need to walk out. We need to share at all times. Uh, how do we keep from getting overwhelmed with all the different prophetic words that are being spoken and all the different theories and doctrines that are coming out, especially if they're focused on the word of God, how do we keep from getting overwhelmed and kind of wade through it all and, and take what's good? Yeah, you know, um, I wanted to also add, you know, before I answer the or talk about this is, you know, what you mentioned about um, fellowship or, you know, having people around you, that's like super important. Um, because I think that it's easier to be excited about something with other people, right? So a, a lot of the backbone of many of these other things is because there are many other people who are excited about it or, or are talking about it. It's the in thing. That's why we're also interested. You know, why is everyone interested in this? Let me also. So, you know, I think it's also really important to have a f a group of people, a fellowship, if you will, friends around you that are interested and passionate, absolutely on far passionate for God, because that'll force you to be excited with them about that. Now you have someone to go and talk about this weekend, about what you read in the Word or what you experienced or whatever else. You know, that is, is many people who I find that many people who isolate themselves or do not have anything like that. Um, uh, you know, they are very prone to fall into what we're talking about today in terms of making some kind of an, focusing on the wrong things, right? And, and so, you know, I want to encourage, you know, anyone who's, who's listening, if you've got no fellowship, you know, seek out fellowship. And, it, it, you know, uh, oftentimes the thing that we, I find is we want to find people who believe exactly what we do in every area. And I want to submit to you that, I will never find someone like that for me. You, you will never find someone like that for you. We will. There will always be little differences. Me and Jake, even we have. When we did, if we talk long enough, dig deep enough, there will probably be little things that we can, you know, discuss and that we may not one hundred percent agree on, and that's totally fine. There's no one in this life you will have that with, right? Even your wife, your husband, you know that there are little things that you don't always one hundred percent agree on. Right, there is unity, but it's not it's it's not deal breakers. It's things that you can still love someone in. It's still someone you love them because of that. How boring would it be if we didn't have that? Even you know. So, you know, with that, it is important to not toss fellowships or people aside to because there's this or other thing that they don't agree with us on. Even if it's little things in terms of scripture or God, what is most important is. Do they believe in the same Messiah as you? Do they believe in loving? Do they believe in, you know, uh, um, being obedient, right? These things. And yeah, you may disagree on little things on how to be obedient exactly in this area. And, uh, but that's what fellowship is about. It is about you going and like I mentioned, actually being excited to share. Not just I want to go so I can get, 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 get and like a baby be spoon fed. 
You know, a lot of times if that's our mindset, we'll be like, no, I don't want to go to this fellowship because they won't be able to feed me. Well, what if it's about you going to give? Okay. So, you know, I just, I'm just, I'm kind of spending a little bit of time on this because I think this is a big deal um, in terms of this. So we don't get too hung up on, on the wrong things either. So that we have accountability and people around us, you know, and so, yeah, with that, then we have, you know, we, like you mentioned, Jay, I mean, the, there's no um, lack of um, like prophetic words and all kinds of uh, dreams and visions and the next one and, you know, whatever else, you know, I, I, at the end of the day, you know, for example, you know, I'll be honest with you, um, a lot of end time prophecies and things like that, that people are putting out, you know, hey, now and then I'll look at something or whatever. But 90% of the time, I'm, I don't. I just don't have time to look at everything, you know. And I think if we, we can get, that can also be something that we just get so distracted by. Like, do you know about this? Do you know about that? You know, and then we are so, we, we, we have this idea that God is coming tomorrow, which can be good, right? Hey, but then we don't actually act like he's coming tomorrow. You know, like, is your life actually, are you living your life? We're all, there are many people who believe, okay, he's coming back tomorrow. He's coming back soon. He's coming back in two months. He's coming back. But now, okay, are you living your life that way? Or because, man, if I believe that he was coming back tomorrow, the day they're off, true, man, you, I'll be out there. I'll be like telling everyone. I'll be like, hey, do you, do you know him? You know, like the, when the Israelites left uh, Egypt, you know, the commandment was take a lamb, a perfect lamb for yourself. Okay, take the blood, put it on your door. And if that lamb is too much for your household, you take it to your neighbor. I want to submit to you, brothers and sisters, Yeshua, the perfect lamb, is too much for just our household. We need to take him to our neighbor. We need to take him and give him to everyone around. So we need to go and be knock on those doors and be like, do you know, do you have his blood, right? Do you know him? Um, and live a life and connect and commun and communion with him like that. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I, look, there's nothing wrong with l listening or reading to about someone's prophetic things or whatever else, right? But again, it just comes down to how how much of your time is going into that, and is it an obsession, right? Is, is that what you're obsessed about? The word of God is enough for us, okay? And yes, I believe God can give dreams and visions, and He said He would which is great, but let's not let that take over our life, take over our private time. And then we sit in the corner all day, just look at these things and we ever, never actually get to live out what he asked us to do and that these things are actually supposed to point us to do. So, I think that's a fantastic way to wrap up this discussion. And the final word of the night would be balance. You know, we, it, there's nothing wrong with looking into topics and into having interests but we have to be very careful not to make them idols and not to allow them to take precedence in our life when other things of far more importance go neglected. And uh, just like I was talking about, you don't want to go and be that person holding up a picture frame and somebody hiding the, the Grand Canyon behind you saying, hey, look at this waterfall. This exists somewhere. This is really true and really cool. And, and hiding the view of what God would have revealed to them if you would just take a step back and let him do his thing. And so um, I think that's a good place to end it. PD, thank you for uh, joining me and having this discussion. I really appreciate it. And I think this is a very important thing because I have this just pressing feeling that as we enter into this age of information and all of these things start to unveil uh, as God said they would, that we got to be careful not to go down the endless rabbit trail and to get stuck on a topic when the time is short. It's not just doom and gloom. You know, so. Exactly. It's, it's like the, the silver lining at the end of all these different conspiracy theories. You have all the people realizing the darkness of the world. And whenever you don't give them the answer, whenever you, you just leave them hanging and you don't say, hey, but guess what? There is salvation and there's a kingdom that you can take part of and and that there's promises that you can take part of uh, that nullify all these evil dark things that we might be talking about that's really what i think is 
the only justification for for diving into certain topics is to to reveal the Messiah as the answer to those people that are caught up in all the different things. And so we have to be careful that we share truth in a timely fashion, that we share truth that is pertinent because it could just be detrimental. And we got to be aware of what we're leading people down whenever we talk about certain topics. And, uh, and I think that's very important. So PD, I think that's all. And uh, thank you for joining me for this first episode of Heart Like the Lion. I'm really excited to start this broadcast and start doing these regular shows, um, really getting to the heart of the matter and, and touching on, on how do we have that heart like David, who was the man after God's own heart, looking into the scripture and loving the Torah that was given. And, uh, and also, how do we love God and love our neighbor as he would have commanded us? How do we have wisdom to share this truth like King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived in the scriptures, uh, but also to hold on to that fear of Yah and not forsake it so that we can remember that that's where all wisdom comes from is to fear him above all. And we're not going to put up idols if we're making him number one. And finally, like what you love to talk about in your book, Reigniting Spirit and Truth, how do we walk out that faith that is putting everything on the line, that is going and and speaking into people's lives, that is going and allowing God's Spirit to walk in and through us. And uh, and I think that's a very important thing. So, PD, thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of Heart Like the Lion. <laughs>